turned out to be something that's quite beautiful. In episode two, Tawanda started to get used to the midnight sun. Andreas, he was fixing the hydrophone. It works again. <laughs> <laughs> we also had a great basking shark encounter before arriving at Bear Island. And now, it was time to explore. And then it's time to explore. After a good rest, we woke up at Bear Island hoping for the sun to pop out. But the fog was still dense. Not just nice. <laughs> it didn't really affect our plans for exploring the island. So while Amalia was prepping the cod for tonight's feast, Tawanda and Andreas was making the dinghy ready. And Avin, responsible as always, was scouting land. Curious about where we climb up. <laughs> A lot of expensive camera equipment if we uh, <laughs> fall in now. <laughs> There's no way onto the other side of the island. It's covered by rocks pretty steep cliffs, so we're trying to find a way. But as always, we put our safety first, so we took no risk and headed back to the boat. The fog is still quite dense, so now we're moving to the other side and we're passing a massive bird colony. This is a bird sanctuary, and I understand why. So we're just going very gently and avoiding the big patches of birds. It's nice to hear them in the fog. It's a lot of life there. The colony is quite spectacular. There's thousands of them everywhere. We were still in exploring mode, and after finding this massive hole in the rocks, we just had to check it out. <laughs> this is absolutely incredible. We just... Uh driving through a narrow keyhole in the in the rock wow look at this look at that rock and these birds man uh, that was incredible that was just uh, something else you know when you drive through there you don't know what to expect and while Avin was appreciating what the island showed us, it decided to open up and show its absolute best side. The fog is lifting and we have this amazing wall just raising up 200 meters in front of us. With all this amazing scenery, it's easy to keep going. But as for all heroes, we need to get some fuel. So I ain't, uh, um, Sonia. We need to in improvise here when we... Uh... We caught this less than a day ago. This morning, actually. And after a short but great break, it was time to have our last brief on this crossing. <clears throat> now we're here. This is the actual wind we have at the moment. Uh, it's one day, four hours. Yeah, maybe we can push seven with the Jenica. But... Yeah. So the closer we get, the higher the likelihood of ice. There is not a lot of ice here, but there is ice. <clears throat> so we need to, when we're on watch, just keep an eye. Ready, Tavanda? Ready for small bun. Let's Are go. you sure? Are you sure you're ready? <laughs> Doing 
way, this is like a magic carpet at the moment. It's flying in directions or downwind. It's comfortable on the boat. Life is good. And when we thought it couldn't be any better, two humpbacks came up just next to the boat to check us out. It's amazing. My favorite whale. Oh. But just as quick as they appeared, they were gone again. And our focus, it was on reaching land on Svalbard. Finally here, amazing. No, it's great to be back. I can't wait to uh, drop the anchor and start looking for uh, polar bears again. It's a good feeling. And so it was. Our journey across the ocean had come to an end and the land of Svalbard lay ready to be explored. The crew had sailed all the way from Stavanger and the euphoric feeling of arrival was only held back by five really tired bodies. So it was time to rest, it was time to reflect and time to process our impressions. Amalia had met her favorite whale and Tawanda had seen his first snow ever. It was just now the real project we're about to start. But let's remember, sometimes in life, it's all about the journey. <laughs>